Hey, 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 fam. Welcome back to Conversations with Carrie. I feel like this is kind of a reoccurring thing that I disappear for a second and come back, but the point is I'm back. So how y'all doing? How your mama doing? How your uncle doing to them? Okay, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, well, you know what? I was really excited to come and chat with you all because I was having a good conversation with my girlfriend. And you know, some of those conversations, I was like, oh Lord, I feel like this is not something I want to keep to myself. Now, of course, I already wrote about it over on CarrieLee.com. But some of y'all, you like Carrie, I like the visual, I don't like to read, whatever it may be, I got a little something for everybody to get God's word across. So, let me dive right into it. So, a friend and I were catching up over weekend brunch, and she was telling me the good news of God answering a prayer. And this is something that we had both prayed about for her. It was time, it felt like it was her season. But I noticed that she wasn't quite excited. Cause you know, normally when God's answering a prayer, you're like, yes, girl, you know, and you're all excited and you want to get your shout on or whatever it might be. And I was like, hmm, you don't seem that excited about this. And so I asked her, I was like, I, what's going on? I feel like you're not as excited as I would assume considering God just answered a major prayer for you. And she says in such a honest and real way, she was like, you know, I know that it's God. And she explained that some other stuff was going on during her week. And she was like, I, I know it's the Lord, but it's just not perfect. And child, I want to just like follow right out, you know, real dramatic, like just fall out on the floor. <laughs> Because I got it. I, I know exactly how she was feeling. There are some times when you're like, oh my gosh, I've been praying about this. And the, the, the prayer is answered. But because it doesn't look like what we expected, it's not that perfect thing and everything's lined up in exactly the perfect way. Sometimes we assume it's not God or that like it's just not right because it doesn't meet our perfect expectations. And I mean, there's so much to this. Like I, I told her, I was like, I really appreciate you sharing this with me because often we let our expectations get in the way of what God wants to do in our life. And I was sitting on BART, I, I commute into um, San Francisco for my, my job. And I was kind of praying through this and I was like, Lord, show me in your word where this, this, this is real. This, is, this has happened before. Because I think we always assume that it has to be God if it, if I pray about it and he answers it exactly how I wanted him to answer it, then okay, it must be Jesus. But as we know, God's ways are not our ways. He does not think like we do. And hallelujah, thank you, Lord, that he doesn't think like we do. But I need an example in word because I was just like, I can't be the only one feeling this way. Obviously, my friend feels this way. I've had other incidents where I felt like, oh, I, I'm pretty sure it's God, but it just doesn't, you know, we think it must be perfect if it's coming from a perfect God. And we're assuming that our view of perfect is his view of perfect. When he knows he's a sovereign God, he knows what's in the future. He knows what's about to happen. So why would we assume that he's going to do things exactly as we expect it? But God is so good. Holy Spirit was like, I got you. I got you. Go ahead and turn to 2 Kings 5. because We're going to talk about the story of Naaman. And as I was reading this on Bart and I was on my phone, me on my phone, I got my Bible here, but I was reading it on the phone and I've read the story several times. And it was such like a, yes, this is exactly what it is. Now, y'all know how I do. I give the Carrie Lee version <laughs> of a summary of the story. But for real, always, as my pastor always tells us, whatever you hear that somebody's t talking about, go back to the word and find it in there. You should read it for yourself. You should study it. I'm going to direct you and I'm not going to read it in this entirety here. But I want you to go back and read 2 Kings 5 about Naaman being healed. So boom, let, all right, let me, let me tell you what the story is. Naaman is an army commander and homeboy had leprosy. And I mean, he's doing his thing. He's out here slaying people left and right. And his servant, uh, a servant girl tells him like, hey, you know what? My master, you should go see the prophet um, in the land. Of, I think she might have told him in Samaria or the prophet of God. And he'll heal you from your leprosy. So Naaman, you know, gets the king to write a letter to the other king who Elisha, what, who is the prophet he's talking about, were serving that king. And Naaman's like, okay, boom, I'm about to go get my healing. I, he gets all his gold, silver. He gets chariots and horses. And I, I imagine, like, if this was in the current day moment, that uh, Naaman would have rolled up in his Bentley with his boys and, like, just been like, yeah, Elisha, I'm here. Go ahead and heal me. And Elisha, being Elisha, sent a messenger to Naaman and told him, go dip in the Jordan, wash yourself seven times in the Jordan. That's it. And do you know, Naaman was like, what the what? <laughs> That's something we and, me and my family say. What the what? 
Because he was like, wait, I thought you was going to come out here and like wave your hand over me, call on the name of the Lord and heal my leprosy, you know, make a big to do of it. Again, keep in mind, Naaman came with certain expectations. He's standing in front of Elisha's door. He got all this gold and, you know, he's like ready to pay this man and make this big display of like, I'm grand and you're healing me. Hallelujah. Elisha was like, no, I don't take all that. Sent his messenger. Elisha didn't even come to the door. It was like, sent his messenger, told him what to do. And Naaman's like, you want me to go wash in the Jordan? There's like, you know, he says a couple other rivers that are way better than the Jordan. I at least thought you was going to come out here and see me. I at least expected you to do this. I at least expected you to do that. But y'all, Elisha was like, it doesn't take all that. And his servants, oh, I love that the servants really were dropping wisdom into Naaman's life. That's why you got to be, you can't think you all that and not listen to the right person. But he, his servants told him, well, master, if he had told you to do some elaborate thing, wouldn't you have done it? So the simplicity of just going and walk, dip seven times in the Jordan, go do it. So Naaman's like, all right, all right, I'm going to go ahead and do it. And he goes out there, dips himself seven times in the Jordan. And not only does he come out with his leprosy gone, but it says that his uh, skin was, re was restored to that of a young boy. So homeboy came out better than what he was even before he got the leprosy. But ain't that just like God? Ah! Hey, no, <laughs> that is so good because that's how God operates. It doesn't take all the elaborate and big things. And that's sometimes what we expect it to be. We expect God to, as if he is uh, bowing down to our request, as if he's like some genie that we're like, Lord, well, I want it like this. And then I want you to do it like this. Lord's like, I got it. I have a plan for you. I have plans to give you a future and a hope. I I'll get this taken care of but it's probably not going to look anything like you thought. And again, so when my friend was like, you know what? I know it's God, but it's not perfect. I'm sure Naaman probably thought the same thing. I know I thought the same thing when I first bought, when I bought my first house, I really wanted a garage. Like I was like, Oh, I, I gotta have a garage. I don't like my car to be sitting out. And you know, I had always lived in apartments and sometimes they were undercover parking. Sometimes it wasn't. I just wanted a garage. And this house, everything was right about it. The price, the location, you know, there's some things I was like, ah, I don't know, but I, I didn't have a garage. And I was like, that ain't the house for me. It can't be. Turns out it was the house for me <laughs> because not only did this house, I, I was in it for seven years. And in that entire seven year time frame, I didn't have to replace any appliances. I didn't have any major things to do. I decided to pull up the carpet and um, put down hardwood floors because that's what I wanted to do. But this house, nothing went wrong. For seven years, I didn't have to do anything but basically live in this house. It was excellent. It was wonderful. It turned out I was even closer to transportation than I thought I was. I used to walk and run. And it just it was just me in this wonderful three-bedroom house. And one of the bedrooms used to be the garage. And it was converted into a bedroom, but it was really long and bigger. So I got to have my, my office in there. And especially during COVID, like I had plenty of room in this house. And even when I went to go sell it, that third bedroom was actually one of the top selling features that helped me build quite a bit of equity in the home when I went to go sell it. So again, what I thought was like, well, Lord, it doesn't have a garage. It can't be right. Like it can't be the perfect house for me if it doesn't have everything I want. And Lord was like, don't worry. <laughs> I got a better idea of perfection lined up for you where you won't have to worry about spending any of your money, doing any of the things that you thought that you would have to do concerning a home. You're not going to have to do that. I love that because God always takes care of us. And even though it doesn't look like we thought, we have to sometimes sit back, surrender our will, and be like, Lord, I trust you. Just like Naaman had to swallow his pride and realize like, okay, let me go dip in this Jordan. And his skin came out better as that of a young boy, better than how he even started probably when he had leprosy as a grown man. Like God always has better in store for us if we would just kind of sit back for a second and not look at all these outside factors, the world, our friends, our family, whomever, influencing us, social media, don't even get me started on that. And if we would just say, Lord, what do you want to do? What do you have for me? Lord, what is your version of perfect? Because I can guarantee you his version of perfect is way better than anything I could ever ask, think, or imagine. Like that's just how great God is. But it always comes in a way that you didn't expect because Again, if, if he thought like us, Lord, there'd be all kinds of issues in the world worse than what we already have if he thought like us. I think we have so many people currently doing whatever they want to do, and that's part of the problem. But that's a story for another day. 
I promise you, God's plan is so much better than anything we can imagine. It may not look exactly like you thought, but if we lay down what we consider our perfect expectations to pick up God's version of perfect, I guarantee you, you will not be disappointed. I hope this blesses you. Please feel free to subscribe and like, share this with other people. And if you want to check out the blog, head over to carrylee.com and do a little reading. Enjoy it. Have a good day.